recently, recently being within the last uh, couple of days, we've made some significant advances. Uh, the most, uh, the greatest of which is the fact that this particular engine, this is the first Pegasus DP1 that has been assembled in the business plan format with a cast uh, case, a brand new crankshaft, pistons and rods. And so worthy of note is the fact that the engine ran for the very first time this past Sunday, uh, July 17th, 2017. Mm -hmm. And that, that was five years and one month after you brought me into it and introduced to me the idea that you had. Yeah. And I bring that up simply because you're one person who has done this as well as run your business, but the engine did run. Yeah. And it ran with an Ostemper ductile iron crankshaft that is now ready to go into production. The cases yeah. are in production. Yes. Um, yeah, and, and you know what? I'm, I'm, I appreciate you, you saying it was all me, but I, I had... I wouldn't be where I am without some really key players. And this, this thing is a reality and it ran on Sunday and is going into production because of um, some very, very intelligent people that are very good at their jobs. And I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the, the help that I got from people that are really good at what they do. I, all, all I did was, you know, design the thing and and, uh, and use, of course, Continental's parts, OEM parts, mm -hmm. uh, that are currently available off the shelf, and make them mate to my parts. And that's basically what I did, and, and, and uh, we just, you know, we just fired it up, and it ran like it had been running all along. Like it was designed that way. <laughs> it was designed that way, yeah. Well, one of the things worthy of note also is the fact that on the engine right now is the test propeller. And this is the same propeller that had been used on the test stand engine that we have been promoting since about 2014. Right. We've taken it on the road now to Oshkosh, to Sun and Fun. This test club is not an airworthy propeller, but because it was used, and you can elaborate on this, on the test stand engine, we elected to use it on this engine for first run and for taxi tests because it'll give us a basis right. of information that you've already received right. from the test engine. Now, based upon the information you're getting now, how does it compare to the prototype test engine? It, this thing is much smoother, it's much quieter um, it, it, than the prototype engine now. And, and um, it seems to be more powerful. Uh, Dave was running it today as I was tuning it, and I think we actually saw... Close to 3,000. Almost 3,000 RPM, which we'd never seen with the prototype engine. Uh, the prototype engine being the one that I've, I've, I cast pretty much, I built myself. Um, this engine is the first production parts. This is the, what we call a beta test engine, uh, and it will soon be followed by the production engines, which are um, configured even differently, a little differently than this one. Based upon the, the, the taxi testing and mm -hmm. the engine run-ups that we've done, um, again, we're not able to fly it, but I think we can pretty much conclude that once the full-size prop is on, the power readings that you were getting out, yeah. the, the, the speeds that you were getting during the, during the high-speed taxi test, all indicate that this engine has almost a reserve of power. This thing is powerful, yeah. We have not dyno tested it yet, and that is coming, but um, just based on the performance of this airplane uh, and the, the amount of power that we're getting out of this, this test club, it's, I have to throttle it back to keep it from going in the air. And, and as of today, we haven't had um, FAA, our, the FAA has not given us our airworthiness certificate for this airplane with this engine and prop combination. So I'm kind of stuck until we get, um, uh, until we can get that paperwork done from the FAA. It's really, that, that's all we're waiting on right yeah. now is, and, is to but, get the uh, paperwork. And, and a prop, and a, and a proper prop, which Craig Cato has, uh, is uh, called today and it's finished. Uh, we're going to pick it up tomorrow on the way out of here to Oshkosh. So, 
and, and Craig is, is one of the people you were describing earlier that has uh, contributed to the success of the engine. He's doing yeah. so with, with one of his propellers. Right. And we're going to have that prop on the, on the engine when we get back to Oshkosh. We won't be able to fly it. And that's not because it won't fly. We think it will. Yeah. We just need the paperwork. And unfortunately, we won't have the paperwork in time for Oshkosh. However, we really do want everybody to know. Pegasus is running and running beautifully yeah. and with a new propeller and a little bit of paperwork, it's going to fly. I have yep. no doubts about that. No doubt at all. In fact, we're so confident about it that, uh, Dave, you're building one of the first of the new Cracker Jack airplanes, yes. the redesigned first Cracker prototype, Jack airplanes, the first prototype. All the templates, all the jigs, I came along at a perfect time. And how far along are you with it now? Uh, fuselage is framed out. I have one wing that's pretty well framed out. Um, all the ribs are built, the spars, everything. Um, it should go together pretty quickly now. We have a lot of metal work to do at this point. So the ribs being built, uh, the airfoil is different. Yes. What, what are the differences between the airfoil on the original, of which this aircraft was the first plans built example of the original Cracker Jack design, and we were fortunate enough to get it back as a test aircraft for the engine, but the new design has some notable differences. It does. It's uh, the a airfoil five digit being one. NACA 34015. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> 34015, yeah. And that's going to result in what kind of change to the flight characteristics of the Cracker Jack? Pitching moment, he was most concerned yeah. with, correct? Yeah, I love the five digit family. It's very low pitching moment airfoils. They are high lift airfoils um, and I anticipate that uh, unloading the tail will it'll allow it to go faster. Of course this engine is close to 60 horsepower and this air, airplane is going to be a rocket ship with that thing on there. That new one is going to fly really nice. Uh, I got rid of the tail wires um, and with the benefit of years and years of engineering uh, experience now, I, I was able to design a, this, take this design and, and upgrade it to something that I feel like is going to be a really nice little airplane. Cantilever tail feathers. Um, airfoiled. Airfoiled. Uh, air, the airfoil on the wing is different, a little bit different tip shape. And then, of course, this, this powerful engine this is going to be a great airplane. And, so. and we have plans to, this is an all wood structure. There are plans coming up um, to build a steel tube fuselage with a, an all aluminum wing as well, fabric covered. So that'll open the market, the uh, availability or the, you know, the um, appeal to a wider market. And you you're, you're a woodworker. Like me, so a little you, wood, a little metal, yeah. and I didn't find it too hard uh, or too intimidating a project, which surprised me. Yeah. So this is the first plans built version, which was uh, first flown around 1980. It flew in 82. 1982. Hubert, Hubert was one of the key players in that in that first prototype. He, he helped and, me. He was one of those keys, key players I was telling you about. With uh, that, that helped me get to where I am. And, and, and you were mentioning earlier, Hubert, that you remember seeing this airplane at Oshkosh. Yeah. In yeah. what year was that? 2000 or 2001. And yeah. by that time, it probably had a couple hundred hours on it? I, I was not able to find the owner at that time. Yeah. Because at first, I, I was walking by and showing my wife, and I go, that's the airplane I helped build. Yeah. And they go, no, that's the wrong colors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the first plans built that Gus Geisinger built. And when you were working on Stearman Wings, I was in there drawing plans for Gus's airplane, and then this airplane. And here we are, we have it now. Gus would call us, you know, asking for help, you know, guidance. And if Pete was not in the shop, I'd talk to Gus. Yeah. And was, we had a lot of conversations with him. Yeah. So it's kind of fitting that that first plans built airplane should be uh, the test bed for the brand new engine. Yeah, I guess it, I guess is smiling right now. I, I, I'm sure he is. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, one of the things that is uh, quite exciting, not only about the the Cracker Jack, this original airplane, but also about the new Cracker Jack, the re-engineered, revised airplane design, is the fact that now when those plans are made available, which hopefully will be 
hopefully will be within the next well, year Dave's, or so. Well, Dave's uh, forcing me. He's <laughs> forcing me to get those drawings done. Well, I'm glad somebody yeah, is. Yeah, he's pushing me forward. Yeah, yeah he's so. one step ahead. Well, what's going to be really close. significant about that is that this is going to be the first time in aviation history, as I know it, with regard to sport aviation, that we have the designer of an airplane and the designer of the engine that is going to power that airplane. And it should be the first time, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I'd like to, I, I want to make sure that I'm right, but as I think about it now, that there will be an engine airplane combination that will be offered in plans and kit form together. Hmm. Nobody else has ever designed an airplane and an engine, and engine? that you can build. <laughs> and the business model for the DP-1, the Pegasus, is that this is a, a kit engine that you can put together and you know I think it's just simply. because no one else is crazy enough to try that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you have, um, I think you have come on to something very, very strong and very powerful, and the proof of it is right here. Yeah, the engine is running so. after after five years, and a lot of people have been waiting to see this engine actually fly. Yeah, they, and, and if they'll bear with us. Just another few weeks until the paperwork yeah. is complete. That's all we're waiting on right now. Everything else is in place. Uh, they're going to see the engine fly. It's no longer a myth. No. <laughs> Pegasus is no longer a myth. It's a real engine. Yes. And it sounds Finally. wonderful. It's been it's been a long, hard uh, road to hoe, but you know we've gotten we've got the best American manufacturers uh, on board uh, as our vendors and and. The company is um, is very streamlined, and uh, we anticipate being able to produce uh, as many engines as the market will bear for a good price. Um, still, the lowest price deal going for a a, a four-cylinder aircraft direct drive engine. Um, you know, uh, it's still a, it's still one of the best deals around, and. Uh, you know, EAAers like to build stuff themselves. They, 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 they're tinkerers. They, they, uh, they want to build a kit. You know, some of the guys are going to want to buy full engines. That's that's true. But and that will probably that will probably probably evolve uh, as things right. progress. Right now, Woodwing Specialty is the distributor for the DP1 engine, and anybody that's interested in putting a deposit down or purchasing an engine kit will do so through Woodwing Specialty, but we're also very well poised to begin a series of distributorships here in the United States and internationally, and we are now ready to start talking to potential distributors and get established worldwide because we feel that this engine will have a very appealing worldwide market in the light sport and mostly in the light sport aircraft industry. Especially in Europe. Uh, but especially in Europe, where fuel yeah. prices are much higher right. than they are here in the United States. Australia, New Zealand, express interest, South America, Canada, um, um, all over Europe, as you said, and all over the United States. A, a, a big market for this. Which will ultimately, I think, lead into uh, somebody actually assembling the engines, just putting together right. a business that will take the right. kits and assemble them and provide completed flyable engines to manufacturers and to home builders if they so choose not to build their own engine. But the business model mm -hmm. is for the home builder to purchase the kit, the proprietary kit, which includes the crankcase halves, the crankshaft, the pistons and the rods, right. and utilize continental cylinders and build their own engine at a very low price right. for an aircraft engine, for a direct drive four-stroke aircraft engine. And I do want to mention too that the production uh, engines that are will be coming out soon uh, incorporate uh, a mount which will uh, easily adapt to an existing uh, two-stroke mount. And so if their two-stroke is no longer serviceable, they can literally unbolt it and bolt this one right in place. And I think that that will broaden the market that we have on this, not only to people who are building new airplanes, but to the existing fleet of ultralight airplanes from the 
single seat 500 pound gross weight airplanes to 1,000 pounds. And um, we, we've got an existing fleet of those airplanes that really don't have an engine. This, this, that now this one can replace that. So not only do we have the, the new guys coming up that are building the, the manufacturers, but we have that, that fleet of, um, well, uh, 100,000 100, probably plus airframes out there worldwide since the 1980s that have been being produced. Well, I know one airplane builder who, who uh, knows what his engine's going to be, and that's Dave. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have to worry about that. Yeah. No. You're not going to go perfect, two stroke? Perfect May 4th. Not after listening to it. That is a beautiful engine. Thank you. Well, Hubert, when you were building wings way back when, did you ever think you'd see one of the Cracker Jacks with a totally new engine on it like this? We've talked about it. Yeah. We, we, it's been we didn't know which way we could go, though. No. It, this is, it's been awesome to see it develop. You know, I, I've been at a distance for a while, but I've really enjoyed talking with Pete and yeah. bringing it up. And very helpful for the, thank you for coming for the last, he's been here a week just, just busting his butt for, and you know, trying to get this airplane and engine ready for Oshkosh this year and all these guys, I couldn't have done it without them. Yeah, this last week has been a, has <laughs> been a real push. It. It just wouldn't push. have missed it. And, it, and, and we did it. it and my it son, here. and Nick too, who's not here, but he came down for uh, the weekend and I, I've never seen a kid work so hard. Man, he was really after it. Well, I've never seen a smile so big as when it fired yeah. for the first time and he was and sitting he there. He was sitting there controlling it, yeah. That was fun. How old was he when you first took him flying in your prototype? Well, that would be illegal. Did you? Oh, of course you, you didn't take him flying <laughs> in your prototype. Plate. Silly bee. <laughs> he, uh, How old was he when you first took him flying? One year, one year old, yeah. He, I, on his first birthday, his mom and I uh, gave him a glider ride. But he's been around airplanes all of his he's life. He's been around airplanes all his life, yeah. And he's a pilot now? Yes. Working on his instrument and commercial. And he's, a, he's an excellent pilot. Yeah. yeah. He was anxious to fly this, and, but had to get back. So, And the paperwork didn't show, so we, we, he'll get to fly it. I think we're all anxious to fly it. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm anxious to fly it. I want to see it go.